Hello and welcome to another episode of Inside the Burrow, the FEU podcast for and by Owls fans, presented by FEUOwlsNest.com. You know what, guys? I, I woke up Sunday morning uh, thinking that I might have just had a horrific nightmare, a night terror, that FAU had one of their most embarrassing games in program history and lost to Old Dominion. I went to go check my phone. You know, I wanted ESPN app, Google, the whole nine yards, and much to my dismay, ended up being a reality. What the hell happened? Oh my God, Kirk! Uh, welcome back. I'm not. I'm not sure if you had that same feeling in the morning. I'm not sure if that kind of represents the general idea uh, throughout our nation. But I certainly was confused and and hoped that that 30 to 16 score line getting beaten every single statistical category was a nightmare uh am i alone in that assessment um i mean definitely a nightmare i think it, you know a lot of the things we talked about and were concerned about after the marshall game just got magnified from the old dominion game um you know i think we both thought i think we both thought or at least maybe it was our FAU bias coming out is like we thought we were going to rebound. You know, if the team was going to rally, go beat a team they were better than, more talented than, and the complete opposite happened. Um, you know, stuff we talked about, like what does FAU do really do well? Not much. And it, it showed again, you know, against Old Dominion. The only thing we can ever lean on is maybe Johnny Ford breaking a couple tackles or getting out in the open field to hopefully bust open a, a screen pass or a run. You know, that's about all we can do. Um, you know, Nikosi struggled again. Um, I mean, it seems like we haven't really seen a good game out of Nikosi, you know, other than the second half of the Charlotte game. And even still, that was a lot of run after the catch, not – a lot of things so i mean just just very 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 frustrating kirk do you remember last week when we said what is the one thing uh we do well do you remember what we both said punting punting there Matt you go Hayball. so yeah maddie hayball everyone's favorite australian so you know i said we, we got beat in every single statistical category there is one where we beat old dominion and that is punts um the thing is we only had one tenth more of a yard punting than they did. We had four punts for 43.5 yards. They had four punts for 43.4 yards uh, average. So uh, just not a good day all the way around. And I think the, the biggest thing for me was, you know, we knew the offensive struggles. Uh, we knew about the offensive line. We knew about the defensive struggles, not being able to apply pressure. The biggest shock for me was seeing these DBs uh, who are who are as athletic as get out. I mean, we, we're going to know that's the type of player that we're going to get uh, when you have a program in South Florida, get beat time and time and time and time and time again uh, by receivers that normally shouldn't have any business going up against these DBs and being successful. Uh, that's A. And B, the, the penalties more than me. Those are the two things that really stuck out because I feel like those are kind of self-inflicted wounds. The penalties, obviously, I mean, Cheese and rice. I mean, the offsides, the false starts. You've got to be kidding me. How hard is it, especially if you're if you're a um, receiver or tight end? How hard is it to look at the ball? That is that is basic football one on one. That is something that when I played JV, me the most unathletic person you could find. That's something that I didn't even mess up. You know what I mean? It's just it's just so. It's so frustrating because it shouldn't be that way. And, and, and you could hear Coach Taggart in the post-game presser of Saturday night. I mean, you could hear the frustration. I mean, borderline anger in the voice, um, in, in his voice. Uh, so I just I, – I, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed, man, because that – I know I said that last week. No, you know what? Screw it. I am kind of mad because that, that, that show out sucked, and, and we should be better than that. I know that there's talk about whether – now, you know, does this team really have that much talent? I mean, come on. Nikosi Perry, yeah. Johnny Ford hit 100 yards again. This offensive line did not struggle this much last year when last year was basically a throwaway year. We were in, you know, we 
We're still second place in the East last year. Hello. Uh, you know, defense, we return everybody but but one starter. You know, now, you know, with Bryce out, Deshaun Moss out, yeah, we're a little bit depleted, but that's just two guys. You don't think everywhere else in the nation is down two, three, four guys, especially on the defensive side of the ball? Of course they are, but they want to make it work. So what's going on? We keep hearing Coach Taggart say that, you know, there needs to be accountability. The players need to have accountability. Recently he started saying that the coaches needed accountability. Um, but, you know, how many times are we going to hear accountability until we actually start to see it? That being said, some news that did happen today, uh, Monday, I should say, is that uh, wide receiver uh, head coach, coach Joey Thomas, he has been relieved of his duties uh, at that position. And all-time NFL legend, uh, Heinz Ward, former Pittsburgh Steeler receiver, who's been an offensive analyst with the team this year, he's now took a step up in his wide receivers coach. Uh, Taggart said mon- you know, Monday morning that he already saw a response from the receivers. Um, he might have let this slip, but he even wouldn't say that even when receivers aren't in drills now, they're not chilling. They're being thrown balls and they're catching the ball, which made me think when they're not in drills, when they're waiting for the player in front of them, are they just standing there beforehand? If so, well, no freaking wonder we had a game with double digit drops. No wonder that, that that's such a common issue, especially on the deep ball. Uh, so it is good to see that that change in, in mindset, that that mentality of I always got to be working. I always got to be honing my craft, making sure I, I watch the ball go in. Uh, and hopefully we can see some uh, some benefit in the long run. Even though what's that benefit going to do? I mean, the race for the East, it's not mathematically eliminated, but I mean, we're going to have to beat Western Kentucky, which if you know, if we beat Old Dominion the way we expected, eh, you know, maybe. Because they are so one-dimensional offensively. But, I mean, the way how we saw our pass defense go last week, uh, I don't see it happening, but I digress. Um, so what, 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 is, what is that benefit going to be for? A, a bowl game? That is, if we make it, we got to think about it, Kirk. you got to go to Bowling Green to play, I'd say probably the second-best team in the conference uh, right now, Western Kentucky, that high-octane offense. And you got to play Middle Tennessee, who, like Marshall, we always tend to struggle with. So I, and that game is going to be dead too. I mean, that's Thanksgiving weekend. I hate it when we host Thanksgiving weekend games because that's, <clears throat> it, it kills attendance. So at least we don't have to go somewhere cold, which is nice. Um, but I mean, thinking about all those things, thinking about, you know, being accountable and the changes with the receiver coach. Um, Kirk, I want to kind of let you talk for a second because, you know, I, I, I saw you tweet. I saw you post in the Owl's Nest. Um it's, it seemed like you, I don't want to say fed up. I want to put words in your mouth, but um, you just were not a happy camper. And you were trying to think, where does this begin and where does this end? So I want you to talk about that and then say, is struggling for a bowl game, is that where you expected this team to be at this point? Is that acceptable by this program standards anymore? Go ahead, take the mic. I mean, kind of the most disappointing thing kind of I tweeted it out and put in the nest is, is there's two common themes of the past two years. And, you know, last year, it's almost you kind of wanted to give a pass to a lot of things because, you know, it was COVID year, a lot of unpredictability, player availability, you know, tough to develop players throughout the year because, you know, maybe they were dealing with COVID or, you know, not being able to practice. But this year, there's really no excuse. And you've seen two things happen the past two years is the team totally regress as the season went on, which, you know, especially, you know, maybe it's an unfair comparison, but going back to the Kiffin years, it's the complete opposite. You always saw that team ascend as the team, you know, the one thing you could criticize, be critical of Kiffin on, and maybe it had to do a lot with the schedule, but even had a couple tough losses. The team always finished really well. You know, they, they were always at the top of their game when it came to, you know, to the bowl game and towards the end of the year. Um, and it's just the complete opposite. It's like you've seen Nikosi seem to get worse. The offensive line has just stayed stagnantly average to below average, you know. I, I think, if, if I may interrupt, I think average is being quite – Probably generous, generous, yeah. Generous, yeah. Um, the wide receivers uh, it's just stagnant and have probably gotten worse as the season got, has gone on. Defense, you know, for the most – Old Dominion was a very disappointing game, but 
you know, the defense has stayed about the same, in my opinion. Um, you know, there's a lot of talent there. You know, they've had some injuries. Um, but just the lack of player development. And, yeah, we do have some holes that, you know, you could argue that, you know, Kiffin did leave on the roster. You know, you could point to the wide receiving core. You could, you know, probably, you know, point to our running backs have seemed to regress over the past couple of years. Because, I mean, go back three years ago, we were talking Malcolm Davidson as the next – you know, Motor Singletary, the next Kareth White, and his game's just fallen off. Um, so just that's really been the most disappointing thing is just the lack of development, um, the lack of kind of what we talked about already is just we don't do anything well. Um, there's nothing we can lean back on and hope, it, you know, know it's going to work. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's really all of that. And it, it, to me, it, we're in a dangerous spot for, for Willie because, you know, you have to see I, – I, do I think he'll end up getting fired? Probably not. I mean, I think he's going to see next year unless, you know, maybe – I think Western, maybe Western Kentucky comes out and wins four or five touchdowns, which honestly, at this point, I don't see it not being – I could see that being very possible. And if we lose the middle of Tennessee State, you know, who knows? Maybe everything's on the table. But going back to what you said – no, this is not the expectation. I'm sure this isn't what President Kelly and, you know, Brian White envisioned with the money they put into the program, the money they put into the facility, the donations they received. Heading into the American, the last thing you want to see this program doing is descending and lowering the talent level going into the American. Yeah, the American's not going to be what it is today, but it's still going to be a very good conference. And the American is kind of counting on FAU filling the role of UCF to start elevating the conference. So the last thing you want to do is see us descending into the American and going in there and struggling, you know, <laughs> you know, I, you know, could things be worse, you know, hearing that FIU uses 10 year old shoulder pads and, you know, <laughs> you know, just their AD getting replaced. So it could be worse, but it's not where you want to see this program going right now. Yeah. I, I think it's a good way to put it. We kind of you know have to be thankful for, for, our leadership and the development we've had in the last few years. And um, to be fair, Willie Taggart he will be one of the first people to say that we're the first people to say that there is, there is a vision up top um, and it was made possible by Lane Kiffin as well. He, he's talked about that a plethora of times. So I'm going to be fair on that. Um, but it, it is, we, we don't know exactly when we'll be going to the American. Uh, I it doesn't look like it's going to be next year. Uh, could be, the summer of uh, 2020, I even heard 2023. I mean, that's all up to the SEC, and that's then up to um, the three schools in the American that are leaving to join the Big 12. If they want to do some sort of expedited payout, you guys know we've talked about that already. Um, but it is going to be a time where we're going to have to be on top of our game as a whole program. And you kind of see that already um, throughout athletics. I mean, Kirk, you and I, you know, we're both big soccer guys. Uh, seeing what the run that the FAU men's soccer team has done was absolutely insane. For those of you fans that don't know, they went all the way to the conference USA championship game, played number 14, ranked nationally. Uh, Kentucky lost them in overtime, absolute heartbreaker. Uh, that's a program that hasn't won a conference tournament game since 2007. I want you to think about that. And I want you to think about how difficult of a soccer conference conference USA is. Uh, FAU beat Marshall, the defending national champions. They were ranked fourth at the time. Uh, they beat them in the uh, semifinals three to one. They beat Charlotte uh, in the first round. Uh, Charlotte just made the tournament. They got in that large bid. So it. What, what I'm trying to say is you kind of do see this progress. Men's basketball as well. They're about to host Miami at the most magnificent arena in the world, the FAU Burrow. Uh, who would have thought? that would happen. You know, Miami wasn't too far away from some really good teams making the NCAA tournament a couple of times. So you see, you see that you see kind of everyone climbing. Uh, and then, like you said, you kind of just see the FE football team, just, I don't want to say bottoming out. I mean, hopefully this is the bottom for us. Uh, but I mean, it's not going in the right direction. And I don't know if that's whether or not that's a Taggart thing, because like you said, last year, the team started to go down in the Kiffin years, the teams would, improve throughout the, the calendar year. But if, if there is a time for this program to be rolling on all cylinders, it's now. You have the Schmidt Center. 
you have the financial backing. Uh, people can say they want about attendance and fan support. Frankly, it's better than it's been in the last decade. That's just straight up. Um, and that, that includes the students. That includes the alumni side. I've been very critical of the uh, alumni side of things, but that's that's been doing well. And also, it's been great for the for the Fairweather fans, people that normally sit on the end zones as well. We've had a couple of good games with those those fans. But yet again, every single time those people come in, it there's a dud. There's always something that's going on. FIU seems to be the only positive there this year and i mean like you said that program's a dumpster fire so i i, I don't know what it's going to take i i still want to give taggart some time I, i'm happy that he's being aggressive when it comes to the coaching staff that we're seeing accountability that's kind of been his word for the last month accountability when it comes to how he handles things but um it's getting to the point where i'm getting kind of tired of it i want to see improvement it, it's frankly embarrassing that we go from a CUSA title race to getting blown out by Old Dominion, giving up all those safeties, making national headlines because of that, and now fighting tooth and nail for a bowl game. For a bowl game. I don't want to go to, dude, I don't know, Bahamas to play Ball State. I mean, I don't know, Bahamas sound kind of nice, but I mean, like, I, you know, but it's like it's for, for a bowl game, that's not, that's not it. That's not it. So I don't, I don't know. If, if you think, Kirk, I want to pose this question to you before we move on to Western. Um, we get blown out by WKU, and then we lose to Middle Tennessee by, let's say, two possessions. What's next? What happens? I mean, I, I, I think that Taggart will get another year, but I think there's going to have to be wholesale changes throughout the coaching staff. Again, for a program that's seen that every year for the last five or six years. What about you? My gut says he probably gets another year. Uh, me personally, I I would if if Western Kentucky blows us out of the stadium, like we get flat out embarrassed, and then we lay another dud at home. I really think you'd have to consider moving moving on, because the way I would look at it is let's just hypothetically say it's looking like we'd probably join the American in twenty twenty three. You basically let a year you get you bring in a new coach, you basically give him the last year of conference USA to get his ducks in a line. So hopefully, you know, you're ready to join the American with a guy in his second year. Whereas, you know, you then you have Willie, we'd have another rough year, then you let someone go, and then the first year into the American, you're kind of trying to figure things out. Could be a first, you know, could be a rough first year as a coach. Um, I mean, hopefully, to, I mean, I know going back to like, you know, going back to Willie's USF days, he was like a week or two away from getting fired at USF. And then this guy came around he, Quinn Flowers and he yep. turned around everyone's fortune there. Um, That's so something I mean, that if I may, that is something that I feel like we kind of forget when we talk about, you know, Willie at USF and how great he did. He, he was literally one game away. That Syracuse game where they blew Syracuse out, that was his last chance. And it worked out. And since that game, they went on an absolute tear with, with Quinton Flowers at quarterback. Uh, and a couple of years later, I mean, they're back in the top 25 in the whole, the whole shebang. Uh, he literally was one game away. And that, that's, fit, that's confirmed, basically, from people that are on the USF beat and from USF fans. So uh, I hate to interrupt. I just, I just wanted to go ahead and say that. So, I mean, I feel like we're kind of – I mean, could we be looking at a very similar situation here is – you know, can Willie get it right? Um, if he comes back for year three, let's say, you know, we go 0-2 or go one on, let's say West Kentucky blows us out and we, you know, we sweep by MTSU. Um, he gets a third. I think you you're, you hit the nail on the head. Wholesale changes have to be made, but, you know, what are those changes? Uh, is he really going to change his OC after one year? Um, you know, especially with Michael Johnson's son here. Um, you know, he already obviously made the switch that so he brought up a wide receiver. Um, you know, he brought in the you know, line coach from this past year, which you thought like it would seem like a good hire originally, but um doesn't seem that way right now because the offensive line like hasn't gotten better throughout the year. Um you know, the defense you know, the defense, I don't know if changes really need to be made because it hasn't been the defense's fault this year. I mean, you just go up and down the line. How many what are our scores the past? four or five weeks we barely break 20 points nowadays which is just embarrassing you know we 
embarrassing in today's college football, especially in like G G five football, like we're not throwing for yards. Like we're not breaking 200 yards and passing, which is unheard of today. And it's not like we're running for three, 400 yards a game. It's not like when Jason Driscoll was throwing off for, you know, in 2017, when he had some of those game lines of seven for 15 for 85 yards, but you know, single Terry, Buddy Howell and Kareth White combined for 450 yards rushing. It didn't really matter. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're barely running the ball and Nikosi's dropping back and we're like, perfect example game by 12 21 187 yards like that's been the norm the past five six weeks it's it's you know it's 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 not an aberration at this point it's who we are but who's who's to say that you know you're talking about stoops wholesale changes he, he could stay on because defense has been well who's to say that he wouldn't want to leave at that point who's going to say that there's not going to be a big program that comes in and says wow we see that you did pretty well with what's become a dumpster fire at fau um we're going to go ahead and pick you. And if you're Stoops, you're trying to get back to the big time. Why would you not take that? Why would you not? It doesn't, even need, it doesn't that- need to be a big program. Look at Jim Lovett. I mean, Jim Lovett went from you to, to the American just to, you know, to SMU. So it's not even like it would even probably take a big program. It'd probably just take, here's a hundred thousand dollars extra a year and, you know, come coach here. And he probably would yeah. jump at that. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I can see if, if Tulsa does it, you know, he gets to go back to Oklahoma. If they say, hey, come come be our, our defense coach. You, I mean, I don't know the inner workings of, of his mindset, of, of his decision making, but if I'm him and things continue to tailspin, why would you not at that point? Get out, get back home, go somewhere else. It's fine. Especially when there's it doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, direction right now. Holy crap, that was depressing. All right. Uh, you know, we, we told ourselves we're not going to be all doom and gloom because it's not all doom and gloom. There's still things to play for. Uh, there's a senior class that's um, been here since 2017 that uh, deserves to go out with a bowl game. And that's definitely still possible. Um, FAU can become bowl eligible. God, I'm just I'm just so mad. We're talking about bowl eligibility. Um, FAU can become bowl eligible and go to, I don't know, the Carolina Beach Bowl and isn't that a thing? Isn't that something? Myrtle Beach, right? That's his thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the Myrtle Beach Bowl. I think it's in a coastal stadium. I'm pretty sure it's a coastal Carolina oh. stadium. Well, whatever. Um, uh, teal turf. Yeah, we'll get to play Miami of Ohio. Instead uh, <clears> of <throat> get it. Uh, hey, by the way, real quick, both of us being Bucks fans, it, it, if you told us last Thursday morning that the Dolphins would be the, the one bright spot um, in South Florida football over the weekend, I would I would laugh directly in your face. There'd be no shot. But here we are. It goes to show how crazy things have been. Um, so, yeah, I mean, FAU can become bowl eligible. It's, it's not over yet. Um, we're just going to be talking about bowl eligibility because I do believe winning the division. I'm just, I'm, I need to stop thinking about that. Um, so, yeah, possible. But Western Kentucky is a tough beat. We've all heard about Bailey Zappi at this point. I know it's something that you've talked about. Uh, Shane's talked about. Uh, we, we have all, we've all been talking about him. Um, a lot of us didn't really believe the hype about Western this year. And a couple of times, Kirk, you might remember we've said, well, you know, hey, they act, we might be eating our own words because they're looking pretty good. Yeah, we're eating our own words. We're eating crow. We're eating doo-doo and everything else, man, because they, I think, might be the only team that can beat UTSA, if they're able to get their defense worked out, um, they can definitely do it. Uh, I'm talking about beating the Roadrunners in San Antonio. For us, I mean, they almost I mean, did already. I mean, they they gave them everything already once this year. So. Yeah, in, in in Bowling Green, that was a great game, absolutely. Uh, but nonetheless, it's I, I feel like their defense doesn't really need to improve much because our offense hasn't really shown much of anything. Remember how we said that? Um, you know, last week, just how disappointed we are and how we, you know, students were able to get over the hump. We'll be okay, but we haven't been able to get over that hump. Morning did it once and it was at Charlotte and we haven't shown any consistent back-to-back games or two games period where we've been able to, to outshine someone. So uh, I mean, what, what do you, what, what's your early thoughts going into um, at the face of the Hilltoppers? I mean, at this, I, I would hate to continue the doom gloom, but 
I, I don't have much hope going into this game, just mainly because we haven't seen anything from our offense and we're not going to be able to waste possession against Western. Um, you know, we might get two or three stops on them and that would probably be doing pretty well. And I would also consider a stop if you hold them to a field goal. Um, you know, maybe our only hope going into this game is, you know, bowling, you know, us going to Bowling Green seems to be their house of horrors. You know, it's the one, it's the one away stadium we seem to have always played well. And, you know, dating back to when even Taggart was the coach of Western Kentucky, we've always played well there. So, um, you know, uh, you know, that, that would maybe be my only hope. I mean, they're off, you know, the defense isn't great. So maybe them not being great could get our offense back on track. Um, but like, it's probably an overused term in general, but like Bailey Zappi and is putting up video game numbers. Like they're, they're truly video game numbers and our DBs just haven't been making plays the past few weeks. I mean, you know, what, you know, what gives us hope that we can make let's, I would say if we hold them to 35, we maybe have a shot, but I, I don't see how that's possible at this point. And, would say we score no shot. points at this point. No, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That requires scoring thirty six. And and I'm trying to be. I'm, I'm I'll always try to be fair in these situations. Uh, what Taggart said, you know, we, we can't even score thirty points against Old Dominion. You know, we can't even score twenty points against Old Dominion. Um, yeah, Western Kentucky's passing attack is, is no joke. Reminds me a lot of the uh, Brandon Dowdy days or the uh, uh, Mike White days. Uh, Jared. Uh, Stearns is absolutely nuts. He has 1,300 yards already this year. Uh, Mitchell Tinsley, 800 yards. I mean, Daywood Davis, they can go all over the field. Uh, and he, these are playmakers. These are athletes. That, that I know that we kind of have and that we should be showcasing, but for some reason, um, we can't. I don't know. Western Kentucky made a deal with the devil. They always get these sneaky good re- quarterbacks um, once every five years, it feels like, right? So, I mean, I, I, yeah, sure. If we hold Western Kentucky 35 points, which is possible because our, our defense has been that, you know, been solid. I mean, again, passing defense has been bad, but we know that's all they're going to do. We know they're going to have an air raid. We know that our rush defense is solid enough. Um, but just how depleted we are at DB, I, I just don't see it especially, I know we said it earlier, but especially with how they played against Old Dominion, like, Jesus. They, Old Dominion had no business winning all those one, one-on-ones they did over 20 yards. And, and we knew it was coming. We Coach Taggart said that's their offense. We knew that they're going to be doing these go routes. So we knew it was coming, and we're still getting burned left and right. If that's happening against Old Dominion, against Western Kentucky, I mean, dude, forget it. Absolutely forget it, man. I mean, yeah, I've, if any, if anything last week, you know, if the same thing happens last week, if we're giving the same type of coverage, yeah, I mean, I think we're looking at a game where we give up 56, 56 points. You know, I, I think they've, that's, they've done that already too. And the other thing that scares me, a thing we, we didn't really talk about earlier is we haven't had, we have not gotten consistent QB pressure really in any game this year. So, you know, that also, I mean, if we were pressuring the quarterback week after week, you know, maybe that would give me some hope. But, you know, we're probably going to drop back. They're, Billy Zappi's going to have all the time in the world to throw and, you know, make throws without having guys up the middle. You know, maybe Evan Anderson can cause some pressure up the middle. But, like, we don't have that guy who – we don't have the late McCarthy. We obviously don't have a Trey Hendrickson. We don't have – you know, we just ha- – we, we were missing that edge rusher we've had, you know. You know, it seems like we've always had a good edge rusher – this year, it's just not there. You know, it's another so, so why not, component of this roster. So why not? Why not just rush three guys? Have a couple linebackers there just to spy, just you know, make sure that no runs go into the secondary, and just send everyone else back. Everybody. I mean, don't don't send blitzes with corners. Don't send blitzes with safeties. Multiple linebackers. Maybe send one if you're feeling frisky, Coach Stoops. But like, what's what's the point? If we know that's their bread and butter, why not? We do everything to try and stop it. Like, like, you know, playing Air Force. Okay, let's put 10 guys in the box and do the best we can. Why don't we put, I don't know, nine guys outside of the box? <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking of like NCAA, like 14. How, is, how would that work? But it's just, 
I, I don't know. It's because we, we know we're not going to get pressure on the quarterback already. So why put more bodies to do something that's not going to happen? Why? Why, why risk more one-on-one um, opportunities for Western Kentucky when, like we saw last week, we could just get burned? I, I don't see the point of it. So I don't know. If, if the defense holds them to 35, man, great. But, again, that requires the offense scoring 36. And, sadly, we're not playing FIU. So that's all there is to it. You want to make a prediction, or is it going to be more doom and gloom? I mean, I can. I, if if we're throwing out an early prediction, I thought the, the spread was being very, very nice. When I first initially saw 10, I think it's in a 10 and a half right now, 10, I, I almost fell out of my chair. I almost wanted to just put everything I had on West Kentucky right then and there. I was thinking more of like 16 and a half. We were what we were going to look at, 16 and a half, 17. That's exactly what I thought, um, yeah. So when I, so it came in and touched down to them when I thought um, – I'm going to say Western 42-20. You know, 20 points has been about what we've been scoring recently. So let's see, maybe we hit double digits because, you know, we'll have enough possessions to maybe score 20. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I really want to say 35-38 area, but I, I mean, if the DBs – um, I, I hate I, mean, I hate counting on them because you know how much I love athletic defensive backs that that talk their talk. You know what I mean? That, that's just perfect for a South Florida program. Um, so I have a lot of confidence, and that that fits right into the Hilltopper strength. So honestly, I was going to say 48, 48 or forty nine. I'm going to draw that back. I'm going to draw it back. Um, 38-17. That's two touchdowns. Or 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 two safeties and a field goal, and another field goal, and some more safeties. Four safeties. That's not gonna happen. Yeah. I think that I think our score predictions. I think the saddest part is just the lack of confidence we have in our offense. It's not even you know obviously we 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 don't have confidence in able to to keep them within reach, but like you know. We slowed down the Mason Fines North Texas teams in the past. Like we, you know, we've been able to do that, but like we just have zero confidence to even score that could even give us a chance, which just is sad. Because you saw the offensive uh, potential earlier in the year against Georgia Southern, against FIU. And that you know, potential's uh, still there. I, I want that yeah, I want that on the record. That potential is still there. The, the, the defensive backs can still ball. The, the whole defense can still ball. We know this. We just haven't seen it on a consistent basis. I'm, I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to interrupt you again, brother. But it's just. It's just so like. I, I hate being doom and gloom, and I know you do too, because we don't want to act like we're we're attacking the program. But we just know the talent is there, and it's not being displayed on the gridiron. So that that goes right into the lack of confidence, dude. It's just until we see that talent perform the way we know that it can on a consistent basis. Then, then we'll be confident again, just like we were after the Charlotte game. After the Charlotte game, we're thinking we're going to win Conference USA again. Now we're begging to go to the Montgomery Bowl. You know, it's just it's laughable. It's amazing how quickly things can change. Yep. Two weeks ago, Conference USA title chase. Today, begging for Brett McMurphy to put us in a bold prediction. So. <laughs> oh, but hey, you know what? FU is a soccer school. That's a okay by me. It's a okay with you. I know that much. Owls and then we got a big game in the borough, right? Some, uh, big Tuesday game in the night. That's right. Tuesday night against Miami, six o'clock. Uh, make sure to wear red, please, guys. Uh, it should be a good one. And the Owls uh, played a, a, a New Mexico Lobos team in Albuquerque uh, last weekend, the last week. Uh, a sneaky good team. Uh, they're traditionally a power in the Mountain West. They seem to be a bit down because they lost some production, but uh, so far they're looking pretty good right now in Albuquerque. So uh, that was a good game. Uh, they did get the Owls did get their first win under the belt uh, against Division Two team. Granted, uh, on Saturday, so I guess Saturday wasn't all bad, right? Uh, uh, hopefully, it's a good borough, uh, good crowd at the borough. I mean, you might remember when you and I were 
were in school, the borough was, was popping, man. And it, it was a fun place to be. Uh, geez, Greg Gant, Ray Taylor, the names go on and on Brett Royster. So, um, it's a good time. Hopefully, hopefully everyone uh, that is there in South Florida can make it. it should be a good one. Uh, wear red. Uh, any, any, any predictions for that one, my man? <laughs> I know that's a curveball just through your way. <laughs> uh, I mean, the program seems to be doing better. Uh, I mean, I love what Dustin May's done the past couple of years. So, um, I mean, they lost a tough one against New Mexico. I, I say I don't think they're going to win, but I have a feeling they get a good game. I would say it's a game, and you know, late to the you know second half, maybe it's uh, we're trying to foul to chasing points towards the end. It's, you know, maybe Miami wins like 75, 68, 68, yeah. something like that. And, and I, I feel like for FB basketball for the last decade, uh, since you know the Mike Jarvis era started to go downhill, we've always we've always knew that the level of expectations between FAU and football and FAU basketball, they're, they're different. And it's kind of been proven since the Lane Kiffin era. Um, no matter what, I just want us to play an entertaining style of basketball at this point. For football, I want to win games. I want to win games any way we can because I know that we can, can compete at a high level. For basketball, hey, if we lose, let's at least have a good time. Let's do it entertainingly. Let's get some more fans back in the borough. Um, because you only need you don't need that many fans to, to make it a, a tough place to play, which is something that a lot of people don't really talk about. So, um, but that all being said, Coach May does have the program going in the right direction. Uh, there's new money going into the into the facilities. They have a brand new locker room, which is mwah, absolutely gorgeous. The borough is about to have a major renovation, so um, it program's going in the right direction. We we talked about it to, full circle. Look at this man. Uh, we talked about it earlier in the pod how the direction of FBU athletics is going up. So, um, and may we trust. Hopefully, uh, he can keep that trend going. Him and the boys uh, will be a good one. So, closing out. You, every single time we said, "Oh, hopefully we come back with a win," and I'm not going to say it this time. But watch, this would be the one time I say that we actually win. So, um, who knows? Hopefully we come back full eligible. I just jinxed it. Knock on wood. Thanks so much for listening, guys. You all already know the deal. Um, Tuesday, this goes up on fuhousenos.com and YouTube. Uh, feel free to listen to the game on the way to the borough Tuesday night or listen to the podcast, sorry, on the way to the borough Tuesday night. Grab a, you know, grab a few brews in the parking lot and have a hot dog. Um, if not that, then you guys already know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Wednesday morning. So uh, thanks again for all your support, everyone. We, we really appreciate you all. Uh, you're the reason why we do this. Uh, we are, we're so thankful for you guys. So even in gloomy days like this, um, we're, we're thankful. So I don't want to shy away from that. So guys, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you all next week and go Owls.